Hello, class. I'm going to start what I think is the 46. Oh, well, wait a second. Sorry about that. I forgot to put my uh, headphone on. I'm going to start what I think is the 42nd uh, lecture in the series uh, in electromagnetic field theory. And in this lecture, I want to do start off do an example um, of uh, if we know, actually, this is an example of RG59U coaxial cable. And <clears throat> you probably realize that uh, that's a 75 ohm cable, the 75 ohm cable that you use, or one of the 75 ohm cables that you can use for hitching up your TV to cable. Uh, if anybody does that nowadays, <laughs> I do, uh, because I still have, uh, I've cut the cord and I only have really regular TV at home. However, if uh, you were to look at the open circuit impedance of an RG59U cable, you would see that it is 150 ohms at uh, an angle of 25 degrees. And its short circuit impedance is 37.5 ohms at an angle of minus 35 degrees. All right. And so if we look at what the characteristic impedance of that cable would be, let's just do the square root of 150 ohms at 25 degrees times 37.5 ohms at minus 35 degrees. And that gives us 150 times, uh, see, I don't have that. Uh, why would I not have written that down? <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote the angle down, which was pretty easy, but 150 times 37.5 gives me 5,000. 5,625. Ohms squared at an angle of 25 and minus 35, so that gives me minus 10 degrees. I hope I have that all right. And then if I take the square root of that, that gives me Seventy five ohms at an angle of minus five degrees. So everyone see how that worked? I took the square root of that and I, I I took this minus ten divided by two. Of course it gave me the minus five. Right? Yes. Okay. So I just wanted to sort of do that to, to show you um and of course, you know, looking at the open circuit and short circuit impedance and all, you know, what I talk about, all of all these impedances are complex numbers. That doesn't mean that uh, these nodes and anti-nodes along the standing wave are not uh, discernible. Let's, let's say that. <laughs> uh, and that's what I sort of wanted to talk about. And to just go over some sort of review of some of the uh, things that we've got, you know, if we look at uh, the short circuit, if we look at a short circuit, we know that the uh, load impedance for that short circuit is going to be zero ohms. And when we throw that into the equation for the reflection coefficient, 
the voltage reflection coefficient. That's going to give us minus one, basically telling us that the reflection is going to be out of phase by 180 degrees, right? That's what the minus one signifies. And if we were to looking at an open circuit load, we can see that that would be infinity ohms and my reflection coefficient for the voltage would be positive one, right? I could look at a, a variety of different uh, configurations too. Do we have a 25 ohm and a 50 ohm load? You know, what would, what would um, uh, be the difference? And, and, and in fact, uh, from our last lecture that we had together, and let me turn on my timer. Yep, trying to get better at this every time. <laughs> there we go. Um, uh, now, where was I? Uh, yeah, we did do uh, an example sort of where we looked at the reflection coefficient and what the VSR was for minus one, but what would be a good example of that? Well, let's, let's look at the reflection coefficient if we had, um, let's say, a, a load of 25 ohms, right? And a characteristic impedance line that we're using of 50 ohms, right? So it'd be 25 minus 50 on top and then 25 uh, plus 50 ohms on bottom. And that gives us uh, minus 25 over 75 or minus 0.3. Three. And in fact, I did. I, I looked at the VSWR in the last lecture uh, for a minus 0.333 reflection coefficient and, and what that made the voltage standing wave ratio become at that time. Now, if we can put uh, the, the, this together sort of in mathematics, let's look at <clears throat> what we have. Now, uh, we've got an incident wave that's going in. And I want to sort of define the wave that, that we're talking about here. So E to the minus J, and this is, I think, following along with the notation in your textbook, E to the minus J beta Z. And of course, this is for a lossless line. Let's, let's put this in here, right? Everything that we're talking about now is a lossless line approximation. And by lossless line approximation, I mean that R prime is equal to zero ohms per meter. And of course, G prime, of course, is zero moles per meter. But what this really uh, uh, implies, though, is that alpha is zero nepers per meter. In other words, we're saying there is no attenuation. And we can make that assumption in a variety of different cases. So it's not a, a stretch of the imagination. So, if I was to define um, the voltage waveform along the uh, wave channel, taking into account the reflection, uh, reflected wave too, let's call um, V0 plus the incident wave and V0 minus the reflected wave. So I would have an equation V of Z, right? So the voltage along the channel that is, that is hosting the uh, standing wave, where the standing wave is resonant, V of Z along that channel, right? So we've got a channel here, right? We've got, we've got a channel that's come up to this uh, uh, reflective boundary. And we've got a wave that's coming in to that channel. And then we've got another wave that is being reflected back off that channel due to the uh, mismatch of impedance that's the same frequency but is of a different magnitude and phase. And these waves add together to then form some type of uh, envelope of waves along the thing so that uh, we end up getting an envelope like that. 
Uh, and we have a minimum of V min right here and a V max right here. And I'm really drawing this for really about a minus 0.3 right now type of, uh, of a wave waveform with reflection at the mismatched impedance boundary. All right. So if I look at this, I'm going to see a, a, a change in the voltage at each individual point Z along this thing, right? Let's say this is zero and uh, this is uh, minus uh, one half wavelength and uh, you know, uh, minus uh, one wavelength so far, you know, going back. So anywhere V of Z along this now, we're going to uh, uh, come up with a, uh, a waveform. So we've got the incident wave V zero plus, right? Because I'm saying that's, that's incident. E to the minus J beta Z plus my reflected waveform, which would be V zero minus. Now we haven't added in anything there. We don't know what is, th that is yet. I'm going to clarify that in just a second. E to the um, plus J beta Z, okay? Because plus is going that way, all right? And minus is going this way. And the incident waveform is going from left to right. And the reflected waveform is going from right to left. So that's uh, how I established it. This is what I've got. But we know something about V going in the opposite direction, don't we? We know that that's the reflected waveform. This is just a general equation of two waveforms. One waveform going in this direction called, called V0 plus and another waveform going in the other direction called V0 minus. So no relationship whatsoever. This is a very general equation uh, of two waveforms that would be traveling in opposite direction down a waveguide. But we know something about V minus zero, right? V my V zero minus is equal to the reflection coefficient times V zero plus, right? Isn't that what, what we know? So what we can say is that V of Z along the standing wave guide, standing, you know, wave guide, <laughs> is going to be equal to V zero plus, um, where the heck have I? Yeah, V zero plus times E to the minus J beta Z plus my reflection coefficient, and of course that's just times this, times E to the plus J beta Z. All right, now that <laughs> also equals, and I've actually done the full derivation because uh, I, I realized in your book, he jumped from one uh, identity to another identity without going through the full derivation. Um, and what that, <laughs> what that entails though, is taking uh, square roots of uh, complex quadratic, um, or quadratic complex numbers. So I, I did that <laughs> just to prove that this identity actually is right. But in your book, he jumps from this to this. V zero plus uh, is equal to one plus uh, the voltage reflection coefficient times E to the positive J two beta Z. Now, uh, there is an identity, trigonometric identities in here that I used as well, uh, but that, that is the identity, and this is uh, sort of the jump he makes in the book. Now, if I was to go through the derivation of all this identity uh, uh, right here that he seems to just take for granted, uh, it would take the whole rest of this lecture and probably uh, into a bit of the next lecture. And really, it's a mathematics uh, lecture which uh, I enjoy doing in my spare time in, in my uh, you know, uh, lecture book here, but I don't have any real desire to go into 
uh, to do that. But feel free, feel free to expand that and check both sides and uh, you will see that that is correct. Uh, like I say, he doesn't really go into an explanation in the book of, of the mathematics involved in that identity either. But um, I just thought that I'd uh, point that out. Now, what I want to get on to, because, uh, you know, I, I, I could go on with lectures forever, but, you know, there's only a certain amount of time you're supposed to sit in front of me for the entire semester anyway. So uh, I also wanted to point out something. You know, if you remember, uh, uh, with the lossless line approximation, if we look at um, the uh, uh, propagation constant, you know, R plus J omega L times G plus J omega C. Yep, you should memorize this and, and uh, recite it in your sleep. But uh, if, we, if we cross that out and we cross this out, what, what do we end up getting? We end up getting the square root of j squared. I'm just going to leave it in the j squared times omega squared times um, L prime C prime, right? And so if we take the square root of that, we get j omega times the square root of L prime C prime. And, and when we do multiply those together, it really almost, uh, you know, if we're working with uh, regular air, we would get J times omega times the square root of mu. Uh, and in fact, it doesn't matter if you're using air or coaxial cable or whatever, these are still gonna cancel out. Mu of whatever the dielectric is times epsilon of whatever the dielectric is, right? So that's what it is. And we know that this has to equal beta, right? So if we know, well, I shouldn't say this equals beta, but this equals, uh, I'll call it, this equals alpha. And of course, alpha equal, or, or, or gamma equals alpha plus J beta. So what beta really equals when we have a lossless line approximation is omega times the square root of mu times epsilon. And where have we seen that before, right? Isn't one over uh, the square root of mu times epsilon for a dielectric equal to the velocity of propagation of the waveform through that, that, that dielectric, right? So one over the square root of that is that. So we could really say, then that beta is equal to omega divided by the velocity of propagation, right? But what is the velocity of propagation? Omega divided by the frequency times the wavelength. Isn't that what the velocity of propagation is equal to? The frequency times the wavelength? But you know, what's omega equal to? Omega is equal to two pi f. And f times the wavelength in the denominator, what happens? The frequency cancels out and beta is equal to two pi divided by the wavelength. Beta equals two pi divided by the wavelength. In a lossless, I'm going to put lossless for a lossless uh, communication uh, circuit. Okay, so so that's what we've got. <clears throat> I am just going to cut that off right there. So I wanted to. Uh, to bring that out. And I also want to do the equations. Uh, you know, really, I should put down the equation. We got the equation for uh, V of Z. How about I of Z, right? Because it's just uh, coincidental on the characteristic impedance of the, of the cable, right? So I of Z then would be V plus, I'm going to write it out in both of these two forms, V plus, V zero plus divided by Z sub zero, right? And why am I dividing it by Z sub zero? Because it's on the line. V plus divided by Z sub zero 
Ohm's law, e to the minus j beta z plus the reflection coefficient, except this reflection coefficient is going to be uh, i, um, so it's 180 degrees out of phase, uh, times v0 plus divided by z0 times e to the plus j beta z, okay? And if I wanted to extend that off into the other thing, it would just be v0 plus divided by z sub zero equals uh, one plus my reflection coefficient times e to the j two beta z just like I've got up here saying I'm using the same identity. And so that would give us uh, the, the current uh, uh, along that line as well. And this of course is a constant. Uh, your V is gonna be you know, changing as we move along. What have I got here? <laughs> oh. Okay. <clears throat> a sip of water. All right, so what I wanted to do is then I, I wanted to sort of start to look uh, at the Smith chart and getting into that section of the uh, uh, chapter eight, because the Smith chart is, is really, we're, we're gonna look at it uh, mainly for its application. And I'm gonna show you, a, I'm gonna do a, a parallel stub matching example on the Smith chart. We could go on the Smith chart for, for a long time. And if there was a lab associated with this course, I have a lot of great labs that we do on the Smith chart. Um, but we, you know, we, we really can't do, the, we, there are no labs associated with this course, first of all, and that wasn't my idea. My idea was to have labs associated with this, uh, but we don't. And so I just wanna go over sort of the, the Smith chart and look at it and then, uh, you know, talk about voltage maximums and, and minimums. I, I sort of want to do a, an example problem uh, for a quarter wave. Hmm. You know, um, I might do that in the next lecture. Let's just finish this up uh, before we get into that. Okay. Uh, if I look at the reflection coefficient as a function along the, the length of the uh, hmm, how should I Yeah, if I'm looking at it as a function uh, along the length of the line, like I've got here moving back, I would say it's z of d minus one over z of d. Now those are small, small uh, z's by the, by the way, plus one. And uh, capital Z, if you wanna think of it, capital Z of d, because this is the normalized, the small z of d is the normalized z of d, but uh, it would be z zero, characteristic of the line, uh, times one plus the reflection coefficient as a function of uh, distance along the line over one minus the reflection coefficient uh, as distance along the line, then z, small z of d, is just big z of d divided by the characteristic impedance. So you can see that all that really does is takes this out, and that and that. Uh, wait a second, where?
and we can uh, switch this around. Here, let me get this back to, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so Z of D, let me, I think you've already seen me do this uh, derivation anyway, but I'm just going to uh, do Z of D now is just uh, capital Z of D divided by Z zero, which I think I, uh, so that, is just going to be one plus tau of D divided by one minus tau or uh, reflection coefficient uh, as a function of distance along the line, right? So if I have this, you can see, and I, I, did I drive, I think I derived that in the last uh, lecture that we had. Uh, if you've got this, Z of D equals one plus tau of D uh, one over one minus tau of D, then I can arrange, rearrange this. I'll, I'll let you do the, the math. <laughs> it's pretty easy math. Just bring this up into here and then, you know, so anyway, you separate it out and you'll get this uh, equation as well, right? So this is just the one equation. Now what we're actually doing is we're looking at the change of normalized impedance along the line where there's a standing wave. Uh, and, and obviously that's the, the next, step in our process to look at voltage maximums. Um, so at a voltage maximum, uh, we have, so let's say voltage, I'll do this, at a voltage maximum, right? We have one plus tau D, and this is a real, Right? This is a real number. So that's a real number at a voltage maximum and, and at a voltage minimum. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump ahead in the story here. That's right. It's, it's, it's purely real at a voltage maximum and a voltage minimum. And it's equal to um, 1 plus the magnitude of tau sub V. So that's one thing. And then at a voltage minimum, one plus tau of D, again, is real. Only at those two places. Everywhere else, it's a complex uh, uh, number. But at those two places, it's real. And it's, and it's uh, equal to uh, one minus the absolute value of, uh, the reflection coefficient. All right, so I just, uh, so, so, so basically then Z is going to be real too. So if I have one plus, um, let's just look at the maximum. Uh, if I have one plus a tau sub V, well, I guess I've run out of paper. How much time have I got, have I done? Oh, I still have plenty of time. I could actually go on but to another sheet of paper, but I, I've never done that. So I'm going to just hold it right there, and we'll go uh, from there in our next lecture. I could use a sip of water anyway.